Hello Slicey Dicers, this is Brian with another knife review for you. Today we have the Lion Steel Roundhead Spearjack. Very excited to get this thing in my hands. I've been wanting one ever since I learned that they exist. It falls very firmly into a category that is near and dear to my heart, the Modern Traditional. I really like these Modern Traditionals. They're super cool. You can carry them anywhere. They're a lot of fun. Modern Traditional basically means kind of, it's kind of all in the name. It's a traditional knife design made with modern materials and construction techniques and i think that's great and i have a couple of them now and i really really like them they work great for me because i travel to europe a couple weeks a year for work so it's really good to have something i know that it's not going to get me in trouble over there but i want something that's still really fancy because i'm very i'm really fancy so i really like that this is a collaboration between CollectorKnives.net. You can see on here it says CK Edition for Collector Knives. Basically, they gave a design to Lion Steel in Italy, and they made it for them. And that's a pretty good collaboration. CollectorKnives.net, very, very good site. Lion Steel makes some amazing high-quality stuff. They've won awards for their quality before. Awesome two things to put together. Uh, this particular version, I will say right now, is not available. They, What happens with these is they do them in runs. So you have to go on to CollectorKnives.net, sign up, get notified that they're available, and then you have to pretty much immediately buy one. Uh, I actually thought I had signed up for this, but I didn't get the email. I think I must have messed up. I wasn't looking at the right email address or something. But luckily, one of my viewers told me, hey, they're out now, and I was like, oh my god, and I jumped, and I got it, and I have to say, I think I bought the last one, so I'm sorry, guys, because I bought it, I went back and hit refresh to take a look at the stats, because I'd forgotten something, and uh, they were gone, so I think, um, I think this may be the last one, so sorry, everybody, if I got the last one, but you can currently pre-order other versions, let me out outline what the versions are, there is this version, this is the least expensive version, so unsurprising that that's the one that I bought. This has Bacote wood handles. Uh, the previous wooden handle version was uh, Palo Santos wood. I'm probably butchering the pronunciations of both of those, but the wood handle version is always the least expensive, 115 bucks. That's what the same run, the last run was also. Next least expensive, you can get one with a ram's horn handle. That is 121 Next up, you have the carbon fiber for 129. Very slick looking knife. Was very tempted by it, but didn't go with that one. And then you can get stag handles for 133, or the most expensive, gorgeous abalone handles, 185 bucks. They're gorgeous though. It is a really cool looking thing, but yeah, I, I'm not sure I'd carry it. I'd probably keep it in a safe place if I if I had the abalone one. But uh, yeah, very, very cool. The, the ordering process is pretty awesome though. You just log in, you can gauge your interest on individual models and they, they email you when they're available. Uh, I think I just missed the email they sent me because everybody says how reliable they are with that or more likely it was one o'clock in the morning and I typed my email address wrong. But anywho, I managed to get one and I'm very, very excited that I did. Let's get into the stats on this right away before we get too much farther. As I said, uh, you're looking at Bacote wood handles, titanium frame, M390. And I guess I didn't say the titanium frame. Yeah, this is all titanium. Titanium bolsters, titanium frame, and M3 freaking 90 steel, which is pretty, pretty, pretty great. Very, very lightweight. Uh, they say 2.12 ounces for this. Uh, I weighed this one. This one was 2.07. Uh, wood is uh, wood. It's a natural thing, so it's gonna vary. So I'm gonna call it 2.1 ounces. We'll just kind of meet in the middle. Uh, very, very light. Uh, you have an overall length of about 7.8 inches. I'm gonna call that seven, yeah, yeah about 7.8 inches. You have the a blade length of pretty much dead on three inches, just a hair under three inches. Cutting length is a little shorter than that because there is a bit of a choil in there. And a uh, blade thickness of 0.09 inches, so pretty thin, slicey little blade. And handle thickness of 0.46 inches, so also pretty thin handle. Not super thin, but exactly what you expect. It's pretty much based on, I think, as I said above, a 77 Barlow pattern. Um, so if you're familiar with that overall shape and size, 
That's pretty much what this is. They're not calling it that, though. They're calling the pattern the spear jack. So, but it's pretty damn close to a 77 Barlow. Uh, I've only held a few 77 Barlows, but, and I, but I've looked at pictures, and yeah, this looks almost exactly like one. Let's get into some size comparisons. Uh, we will do the more obvious ones first, and then we'll get a bit silly, I guess. Of course, the most obvious comparison, because they are exactly the same price, exactly the same category. You have the Benchmade Proper. Yes, there is a comparison video coming up. Uh, I want to carry them both side by side for a week or so before I do that. But uh, it's it's going to be a tough choice, spoiler alert. That's that's what I'm going to say about that. Because the, the, I love both of these knives. I really, really do. But I'm going to Germany and I'd really rather only take one because I don't want to take the risk of them both getting taken. Uh, so, you know, getting lost, my luggage getting lost or whatever. So, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be a tough decision. But... Obviously very close in size there. Uh, another modern traditional that I own, but just much smaller. Spider Karoti, this is kind of silly. Obviously it's much, much smaller. Um, some some other more kind of oldie timey traditional knives that I have. We have the, gosh, I'm totally, my fingers are slipping out. I think I got oil on them. Open L number six, it's very, very close in size to the Open L number six, and I much prefer the Open L number six to the Open L number eight that everyone else prefers. But since it seems like all the other knife reviewers prefer the number eight to the number six, here's a number eight just to make you happy. I got a red one just to be, I don't know, spiteful, rebellious, something like that. And for consistency's sake, we are going to put up and keeping things classy, Chris Reeve Large Sabenza. So you can see, it's a pretty small knife. It's not a big knife. It's, this is not meant to be a big heavy-duty, you know, work-a-day knife. It's a work-a-day knife, not a work-all-day knife. Oh, and you know what? This is just me. They'll let me indulge myself for four seconds here on the camera. Just because I just have this now. The Spider Co. Spider Co. Sorry. Zero tolerance, it's spider co my brain because of the roadie. Zero tolerance, 452 CF. Yeah, which is a ridiculous monster. Review of that coming up too. All right, let's move on to the quality and aesthetics. Uh, the aesthetics, I think this thing is beautiful. I really do like the way it looks. I think this wood looks really good. We're gonna try and zoom in here a bit. Hope it focuses. I think the wood looks great. This Bacote wood, there's some grain to it. It's not perfectly polished smooth, but I'm fine with that. It's pretty close to that. It just feels like really high quality furniture. I really, really like it. As you can see, the there is a bit of a join between the bolsters and the you know and, and the handles, but it's it's not. You it, you barely feel it. Everything is super rounded off. I really like that. The back of the blades all rounded off. It's just a beautiful quality piece to hold in your hand. And again, as I said, M390 blade, titanium uh, liners. It does have a stainless steel back spring, obviously. Um, it's just super well done. I really do like it. Now, I will say, it, you can see all these torque screws on the outside of it, and you think, oh, cool, you can take it apart like you can't bench make proper. N no, not really. That is one downside of this. Those screws are just holding on the uh, bolster and the handle. You can take those off. That's cool. And companies are already making custom uh, handles for these, so that's sweet. You can get rid of the bolsters and replace the whole thing. I saw one company and just replace the whole thing with one piece. That's cool. That's great. Once you get it apart, you can adjust the pivot. Uh, but other than that, that's about it. Everything else is pinned together. I, I would not, I would not try and take it apart farther than that. Um, everything's under tension in there, but it is nice that you can at least adjust the pivot on it where in most, you know, really traditional, traditional knives, you can't do anything with it at all. Well, they're all pinned together and that's it. You can drip some oil in there. You can clean it out with a, you know, with compressed air or dunk it and, some kind of solvent and then re-oil it, but you know, other than that, that's about it. But 
I really do like the way that it looks and it comes with a kind of unique package option. So it just comes in this plain line steel box. Um, I did not uh, get the optional leather slip case. You can get one of those for 10 bucks, which is wicked cheap for a real nice Italian leather slip case that's very supple and nice and cool. Uh, I did not get one because I already have a collector knife slip case that I'm not doing anything with. Why I'm not doing anything with it is I'm an idiot and I ordered the wrong size for my Benchmade proper. I got this for this and it doesn't quite fit because as you can see it's a taller knife and it just doesn't quite fit. I should have gotten the next size up. But stupid me, instead of returning this $13 leather slip case, uh, I bought another $115 knife that would fit it. That was my final justification to get one of these. Well, hey, I already got the case. I might as well buy, the, buy a knife that fits it. Doesn't take much for me to justify another knife purpose. I'm a moron that way. But uh, yeah, and it, you know, and they do they they shrink wrap their boxes. It's the first time I ever got a priority mail mail or priority mailbox that is shrink wrapped. It's kind of cool. Um, it did have a little Bible verse, read the Bible thing in it, and so did this when I bought this. Um, no comment. Take with that what you will, but. When you order from collectorknives.net, you get a little Bible thing. All right, uh, let's go on to the blade. This is obviously my favorite thing about this knife. It's freaking M390. I love M390, and it's 115 bucks for this version. You get M390. That is very rare, even in a high-tech knife. The only other thing I can think of an M390 that's cheaper is the Kershaw Dividend, which is only very sporadically available, and it's actually gone now. There's rumors it might come back, but nobody knows. So, if you want M390, I mean, this is a great entry-level price. Uh, it is fairly thin and blade stock. It does have that Italian-style edge, meaning there's a bit of convex to it. Uh, a lot of the Italian companies do this. Um, it's not particularly thin behind the edge for the thinness of the stock but it's fine it works great um i had no problems with it the kind of task that you're going to use a non-locking knife for this can handle all of it and it's m390 if you have the skills and you just say i don't want that convexy edge i want to put a really super sharp you know 17 degree edge on it knock yourself out it's going to be fine uh, it's not super hard to work with or anything, and it will hold that edge. But I like the edge on that it comes with just absolutely fine. That, that's the only complaint I've seen about the round head in previous reviews from the last batch was that the you know it was a little thick behind the edge. I it doesn't bother me a bit. I think it's fine. Uh, is it as slicey as the Benchmade proper? Nah, eh, probably not quite, but it's close enough. I really like it. I, I have no issues with it. I can't really complain. Uh, ergonomically feels like a traditional knife. It feels like a 77 Barlow in your hand. It just, it's, uh, you can get all four fingers on it. Uh, it is obviously fairly, you know, short height-wise, so you're going to be wrapping all the way around. Uh, it's not an ergonomic master, you know, like a Mannix too lightweight or something, but it's not designed to be. It's not designed to be like that. Um, yeah. It's it's okay. It's perfectly fine ergonomically. Oh, and while I'm looking at it, I, one thing: step back on the blade. This is a very robust tip. I do like that a lot. I meant forgot to mention that in the uh, blade category. Skipped over that part, but uh, I do really like the with this little swedge up here. It is for this thin of a blade. It's a pretty robust tip. It's going to be a really good for piercing kind of tasks. Now in the carry, super lightweight. Obviously, uh, drops down in the bottom of your pocket forget that it's even there which is really really good and uh the only debate you have is whether or not do, are you going to put in a slip case or are you not and in this particular slip case which is the same size as the one that will come with this if you order the uh italian leather one this is much stiffer leather uh but the italian leather one's much more supple much more supple supple but even with the slip case in it it's it's super light, doesn't take a much room in your pocket. You can put other stuff in with it. I'm 50-50. If, if I don't have anything else in my pocket, I don't use the case. If I want to combine things in that pocket, then I put it in the case. So that's up to you. It's a, 
completely up to you. Now the action on these, I, I'm, I'm studying guys. I learn terms just for you guys. Since I've gotten this modern traditional kind of phase that I'm in, I've learned some of the more traditional phrases. So I'm gonna, normally in this thing, I would call this section action or deployment, but uh, I'm gonna call it walk and talk because that's what they call it. They use old timey terms. The pull on this, on the traditional scale of one to 10, Collector Knives calls it a five. I've heard other people call it a five, uh, so that's what I'm going to go by. I, I don't, I will admit, I don't have a lot of traditionals, but the, the ones that I do have, yeah, it's, it's, I would call it, yeah, pretty much middle of the road. It's easy to open, but um, not, not so easy that you worry about it popping open in your pocket. I think it's a very good balance. It does have dual nail nicks, but as you noticed, I don't use those because enough blade sticks out, you can pinch open it. Which is honestly my, my preferred way to open a slip joint. If I don't have to use the nail nicks, I don't. Because it's I just don't like them. It's just a pain in the butt. So I do like that you can just grab it. Those those dual nail nicks work great, just as something to grab a hold of. It's a, kind of a long pull, but it, it works really, really well. I do... It, it, everything's very smooth. There's no grittiness. I've done nothing to this thing since I've had it the last couple of days. There's no... No, like, factory grit that I can feel or anything that make me want to even... I've even put a drop of lube in it, which I almost always do as soon as I get a knife. Very, very good. So, what is my conclusion on this knife? Obviously, I like it a lot. I mean, I don't think that's a long shot if you've watched, if you've gotten this far in the video. It's really cool. Uh, how I like to... Uh, the analogy I like to give for this knife... And this is a bit of a deep dive, but uh, it's worth going to look at a couple, a couple videos about this. If you are at all remotely interested in automobiles, there's this company called Singer in California, which will take an old air-cooled 911, bore out the engine, make it more powerful, put a carbon fiber body on it, put all the best bits that have ever been of the 911 into one design customize it completely to you and you I mean the interior everything they're just utterly gorgeous but the bones of it are you know like a 77 air cool 911 but it looks better is lighter more power all those things this is like the singer porsche of the knife world it's an old school design with every modern technique and every modern thing they can throw at it without making it look dramatically different. And I love that about it. I really do. I can't believe this is 115 bucks. That is... I would have probably stupidly paid $200 for this if I had to. It's just a gorgeously done, really, really, really updated without looking like it's updated kind of knife and what you get is a modern knife with m390 titanium scales depending on the the handles you get you may even have some carbon fiber or whatever but it's a knife that is going to perform everything that you really need to do in most of your edc things unless you're working and you know you're really a working guy on a construction site or military or law enforcement or something but for 90 percent of us it's going to be a fine EDC knife, and you can take it out anywhere, and it's not going to intimidate anyone. To the contrary, I would say anywhere you take this out, even non-knife people are going to kind of appreciate it. It's something that they've seen before. Probably the grandfather carried a knife like this that looked like this. And it's just, I really love it. I really, I'm, I'm totally getting in this modern traditional thing, and this thing is amazing. So go to collectorknives.net if you want one. Sign up for the Pruder the next one. They also have one called the Shuffler coming out that has a uh, clip point tip. Um, I missed that one. Uh, that They're not even available to pre-order right now, but I'm sure the, uh, the next run I'm going to try and jump in on one of those. But gorgeous stuff. I love this collaboration between Collector Knives and Lion Steel. Go check them out. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.